The Rise of the Villain. And it is directed by Federica Alice Carlino. And it is nominated for Best Fan Film, Best Villain Film, Best Ensemble Cast, and Best Web Series Webisode. I'm going to hand it back to our dear friend, Tori, uh, to ask some questions. Thank you, Thomas. And welcome, everyone. And congrats on being nominated for four awards. It's so exciting. <laughs> um, so my first question, I'm going to send it on over to Frederica. Um, I would love to hear what is it about the Batman universe that um, really spoke to you and made you want to create original content around? It was actually about Joker because um, I was so devastated when Heath Ledger died and uh, with some of my friends, uh, including Julia playing Arlie, um, we decided to create an homage to uh, Heath Ledger because he left too soon and he was very talented. And I think he was the best Joker till now. So we wanted to, to bring also the side of the villains because you also always say, uh, see uh, the side of Batman and all the good guys. And we just wanted the villains to have their own uh, side of the story, why they're like, like that, why they're bad and why they are the villains that they are because they have a backstory that brought them to be who they are. And not everyone talks about it. So yeah, we wanted to do that. And Emanuele was a great fit for Joker for sure. Absolutely. What a wonderful Joker in a and well, yes. honestly. <laughs> that was great. So Emanuele and all of you who acted in this wonderful film, I would love to hear about um, how did you embody these really wonderful, famous characters that we've all come to grow and love over the years? Emanuele, come sei arrivato a fare il Joker? Cosa, cosa c'è stato dietro la tua interpretazione? Il microfono. <laughs> diciamo che ho sempre amato il, il Joker proprio dal, dal fumetto fino ai film cinematografici. Però per riuscire insomma, ad entrare nel personaggio mi sono molto affezionato a, a, a quello insomma, cinematografico, quindi da quello del Jack Nicholson fino ad arrivare appunto a quello di Ledger, che per me è stato proprio il migliore in assoluto. So he fell in love with the comic book and he fell in love with the character since he was very young and he followed the uh, journey of Joker since Jack Nicholson to Heath Ledger and actually he just started to cosplay also um, the Joaquin Phoenix version re just recently so and he's doing it very well but it's not part of the series but he's really good at that. Who's next? <laughs> We take it on down to, since you, I see you first in the lineup, Manuel, do you want to talk a little bit? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. No, no pressure. <laughs> These two uh, characters, actually. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, uh, my perfect char character is um, Gordon, but I play also uh, Scarecrow. So there was a... a a lot of pressure because two different characters, one is the, the good guy and the other one is the bad guy. Uh, for me, uh, to play Gordon, I take inspiration from uh, Gary Oldman, for sure. And um, at, the, at the time, there was no J.K. Simmons because I, I like his Gordon, okay? It's very, it's very good because it's, uh, he got a lot of... Um, <laughs> Stamina. Uh, you see, he's very big, he's very strong, uh, and uh, he's not falling uh, during the, the, the chaos that is in uh, in Gotham. But, um, okay, so, sorry, it's a lot of emotion right now. It was very hard to play for me, because he's an important character, and uh, it's only one side of the story, the little side with versus all the, the, the villain that is shown in the series. So it's the only one who have to fight with everybody, hmm. okay? And uh, that's because, uh, if I can say, it's li like a little bit spoiler, before Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's before Batman. <laughs> so uh, for that moment, he's alone fighting all this criminal. <clears throat> so you have to, to give him uh, like a sprint uh, to make him strong to fight all this big uh, supervillain. And for the scarecrow, 
uh, I put more uh, madness on him just to make sure he was different from the others because he's completely crazy. He don't know what he's doing and he's, uh, just to be clear, uh, he's working with the cows and he do, his, do it great. Just this, okay. <laughs> yeah, we also decided not to let him speak. Like he just laughs, which I think it's terrifying. <laughs> I think it's terrifying. <laughs> And he does it very well. I'll agree with that. I was like, oh, my. <laughs> That's a great laugh. <laughs> Thank you. <Indeed. laughs> it was very hard not to laugh on set. <laughs> yes, Definitely. Julia, since you just um, opened the mic, yeah, do you want to talk okay. a little bit more about that? <laughs> well, I, as Federica said before, I, I loved Harley. I love Harley. And uh, when we started with this project, there was no live action Harley at all. So I was very sad because I wanted to see her in a movie once. And I said, why not? I can do that. <laughs> so we start talking about that. I, I love the, I, I still love Harley and in the animated series is my favorite. I love the video games. And uh, the look actually is taken from the Arkham Asylum, the, the video game and uh the comic so and we start talking about that and she said oh i want to do the tri a, tri a tribute to it legend and i said hey we can do that we can put her there so i love harley because she's kind of a a gray character she she can be totally crazy but she he's having also recently her, her happy ending and she she's now a She's not a good girl. She's not a bad girl anymore. I think she can be bad when she wants to, but now, now she she's just a, a boring good girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to see you bring more of that bad girl energy into her in the future. Oh maybe. yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that part of her very much. It's more fun when when you play the good guy. It's not that fun. The, the villain is way more fun. You can, you know, beat Batman, but you can also kiss him. It's, well, you can do whatever the hell you want when you're when you're a villain. No rules. And that's part of the no, fun. That's part of fun. Exactly. Okay, so um, Angelica, how about you? We don't see a lot of you in this film, but I would love to hear more. Yeah, uh, I'm not in the first episode of uh, The Rise of the Villains, uh, but uh, I, I, I come in this uh, series in the fourth uh, episode. Uh, and um, I'm so happy uh, <laughs> for this because uh, when Federica calls me for uh, the role of uh, Zatanna, um, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't know the character as well, <laughs> but I study too much for this character because uh, uh, the first impression is so good. I like Zatanna, it's a, a strong woman, is a witch, it's powerful. And uh, I like so much uh, her behavior. Um, and uh, I feel uh, like her in, uh, in some aspect of uh, her behavior, um, like uh, the lover with her father. Uh, I have a really um, good. Uh, you have a great bond with your father. Yes, I have a yeah. great bond with my father, and uh, this is um, a point uh, um, that uh, me and Zatanna have uh, together in uh, in community. <laughs> like that i'm so sorry for my english but i'm so emotional about that it's my first <laughs> q a uh, and um i'm part an important aspect uh, of the tana is uh, that uh, me and federica we don't want uh, overly sexualized the mage of this uh, character because <laughs> in the comics uh, but also in the um, cartoons uh, it's always uh, um Naked. <laughs> it's a naked. It's a naked uh, character. Um, my version is more like a teenager. I wear. Uh, um, I wear uh, always uh, uh, jeans, uh, crop top, uh, and um, sometimes I wear heels uh, because uh, I think uh, that heels uh, uh, make uh, more um, 
uh, feminizing uh, the character. But uh, it, um, but uh, I will prefer that uh, yeah, he was uh, uh, remembered for his uh, for her power because he's stronger, is our strongest witch, and uh, she used uh, her power for do uh, for do what uh, what what her want. Absolutely, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sounds like you're giving Zatanna her power back in a way, which is mm -hmm. wonderful. And also, congrats on your first Q and A. You're doing wonderfully, and never apologize for language Thank barrier. You so much. Never yeah. an issue. <laughs> um, so, Frederica, um, you actually, as well as being the director, are also a character. You play Hannah, yeah. who's one of the good yeah. guys. But I yeah. would love to hear more about how you embodied Hannah and what it was mm -hmm. like to both direct and act at the same time. <laughs> it wasn't easy, but uh, that's why uh, she doesn't last that much in the series. I'm not going to spoil that much, but um, it's more of a, a power engine for Gordon because sometimes Gordon is very, um, like he doesn't think too much about his actions. So he needs someone to be on, on his shoulder and be like, dude, no, that's not what you're <laughs> supposed to do. Like, calm down. Um, so it, it's that kind of voice that still resonates in his brain every time that he's making a bad decision about his job and about how to behave with all these villains coming all over. Um, and then it's also a way for him to see um, these villains on another aspect. So I, I, I can't talk too much about Hannah because on the second episode, it's... Um, she's gonna be the key of some of his actions and um, I can't spoil it, if, I don't know if you watch it. Um, but yeah, she's gonna be very important, but just for Gordon, it's not a very important character, uh, but it's important for him in the future to behave in a certain way too. Like we're gonna see a completely different Gordon because he was so good. And then after Hannah does something, um, he's gonna be more, vengeful but in a good way I, I don't I can't explain it too much but um yeah it, it's gonna change it's gonna be a different Gordon for sure Ooh. almost a dark side of it oh I'm so excited yeah. the rise yeah. of another villain <laughs> yes probably yes. <laughs> and I must say in this episode the building feels very much like a character in my opinion what a beautiful set what it really just set the mood. And I would love to hear more about how you found that place. God, okay. So it's actually a real asylum. Um, it, it's abandoned at this point, but we thought it would be the great set for this dialogue between the Joker and Two-Face. Um, and we didn't have to do much, to be honest. Like, there's no production like production design on that because that's nature taking over this building during this all these years. I think it's like almost 30 years that it's been abandoned. You know, we wanted something like that to be, uh, to almost speak for itself. Like we wanted the set to be a character itself. Um, and I hope it worked. <laughs> um, yeah, it did. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pull up. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Oh, um, look, there's a bed. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. there's a broken wall. Oh, look. Yeah, all we did was bring, bring in like bed sheets to cover the bed because, you know, uh, that's not really good. Um, but that's all we did. We just covered the bed. We put the guy on it. Um, Emanuele did his monologue. He was great about it. Um, the villains were moving all over the place. And especially I love to see Poison Ivy with all that natural, real ivy all over the place touching it. So it's, yeah, the place, it's a real abandoned place. It's full of, you know, dark legends. A lot of people go there and do a lot of sands and ghost hunting. Uh, and it, after we went there, actually, I saw a lot of shorts after that. So I probably we started something. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Everyone heard through the ivy vine that that was the place to be. <laughs> yes, yes. When we say it's a real asylum, people are like, wait, what? But yeah, we wanted something real. We want it to be very raw. Yeah, it definitely truly is. And it's even cool <laughs> to hear because I had assumed like the bed, for instance, that you brought in and even the ivy, it was just so perfect that I assumed that yes. was your decision. But what a wonderful 
like place yes. in mind. So congrats. Yeah. That definitely is a character. Yeah. Cool. I loved to I, I loved to explore that place. It, it was amazing. Yeah. Because like there, there were writings and murales on the on the walls and we said, oh my God, we can use that. We can use that and that too. I, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, all we did was like writing the last sentence. Yeah. We are rising and that's it. All the other stuff was there. We, we spent a full day just discovering the place, just to see if it was safe, you know, because you never oh, know. Absolutely. Yeah. One of my just favorite don't, moments. Just don't go downstairs. Don't no. go oh, d- God. downstairs. <laughs> it's like a four kilometer of tunnel and uh, it's very dark. Uh, I, I need just one meter and then I, I, I come back <laughs> to the lights <laughs> because it's yeah, very so scary. We're... I like to say, to, to tell this story, there were actual peaks on a table, real feet. Go oh, into <laughs> that, what? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> there was a table, like a, a metal th- metal table, like a operation table, I think. And there was feet on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, we're not using that room. And <laughs> we said, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, now everybody is frightened about the real teeth on the table. This is the moderator speaking. We're going to just jump right in. We are going a little oh, long. We have some audience questions. Thank you for this fabulous. We could just go on forever. Um, but That's thank good. you for uh, this uh, incredible Q&A uh, from Italy. Thank you so much. Uh, please make thank sure you that you join us at the award ceremony at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this evening. We're going to ask all the filmmakers in the film block, please, to... Um, come up right now, open up your cameras. We've got questions from the audience kind of across the board for everyone. So everybody, uh, the folks from the UK, please bring up your cameras. Uh, Mr. Pinkston, please bring up your camera. Here we go. If uh, everybody could talk about just very quickly, and remember we have another Q&A waiting. So like I said, this could be a whole night thing. Please uh, talk about the creative feedback loops that enhanced your films. I didn't give any feedback because I, ne- I never thought anybody else would see it besides me. So when <laughs> by the time it was done, <laughs> I guess now's the time for that feedback. But yeah, other than discovering things in the edit, uh, it was pretty pretty much a one man show. So I didn't really uh, have a whole lot of eyes on it until today, really. <laughs> That's the great thing about this festival. Definitely. Here, here in the UK, the BBC has split itself into loads of little different production divisions. And one of them is called Unscripted. These BBC Unscripted productions, which are basically, you know, stuff that's not written, so it's interviews or whatever you get. And this was definitely an unscripted production. And, and the most we ever did was to try and give these amazing, wonderful people a voice. We gave them a little bit of exposure, a little bit of airtime. And that's what we did. And they were amazing. Uh, well, Veronica. we um, well, we're based on on a comic book, so um, but we tried to make it ours. So um, we changed outfits, we changed the characters, behaviors, maybe. Uh, we changed the plot. It was, it's kind of ours. Um, about the feedback, well, you know, comic book lovers always have something to say, you know, oh, this character <laughs> is not like that. Oh, the costume is not really that. Oh, you know, that kind of stuff. So, but we're used to it. So it's okay. So, you know, some feedback is great. Um, Cause for example, <laughs> Julia had a ring on her uh, in the, in the asylum. And people were like, oh, you're not supposed to keep uh, a ring in, asylums and we totally forgot about it and then we were like oh that's a good feedback uh we should justify that so we find we found a way for her to keep the ring uh because she's too crazy and she almost (laughs) beat off a nurse face uh to keep the ring so they're like okay you can keep it it's okay um but we we thought that that was a great feedback because we had to justify that but yeah usually it's just like comic book lovers that have to give their input to their knowledge on comic books. That's basically that. 
All right, everybody, I'm sorry. I hate to be the bad guy. I'm joining the villains team over here. I have to cut this q and I'm coming over there. I'm coming over there, Holly Quinn. I have to cut this off because we've got some other films to talk about in another completely different room. But what, what an amazing crowd. Give yourselves all, all a clap. Give yourselves a clap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give yourselves some applause. Grazie, mille grazie over there in Italy. Grazie. <laughs> Thank you so much in the UK. We'll see everybody shortly. And, ciao, and ciao for now. Cheers. Thank you. Here we are. Here we go. <laughs> Our next uh, award goes to Best Fan Film. Second place goes to The Rise of the Villains, di directed by Federica Alice Carlino. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> come on, everybody. Come on up, everybody. Who's here? Ah, I see some folks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see some folks. Yeah, I yeah. see some more folks. Yeah, I thank um, our friends, our family, the, everyone that borrowed that has all the locations for the next episodes. Um, I want to thank the fallen soldiers that couldn't make it because it's 4 a.m., uh, 5 a.m. In, in Italy. So it's, uh, it's a bit late uh, or early. It depends on how you see the, the view about that. And uh, the next chapter comes next month. So we're, uh, we're very happy to present that very soon. And yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Best ensemble cast goes to the villains in the Rise of the Villains directed by Federica Alice Carlino. Oh, <laughs> huge award, that's absolutely huge. Thank you so much. I'll I'll tell everyone. Unfortunately, everyone is asleep at this point. But thank you again for having us. Uh, that, this was the best interview ever, to be honest. We were actually waiting for this one because this one was the, the most important for us. And we had we involved everyone that we know, everyone that we could find. And, uh, you know, we come from all over the place because Emanuele comes from Rome. Uh, I live abroad. I don't live even in Italy and everyone comes all over Italy. So it's it was amazing to finally have this project out and continuing because it's been seven years that we're going on with this with this project. So um, we are actually coming to an end and it's going to be a great end. So we, we are lucky to finish with this festival. Thank you so much. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Yay. You me Thank you. Cheer up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, submitting to Geek Fest Toronto. We love that we could be the person, uh, uh, the, the festival that you end your festival run on for this particular film, uh, Federica. Uh, such a, a, a wonderful endeavor. Thank you so much. Uh, host, is that all we can announce right now because we don't have uh, the rest of the returns in yet from the viewing audience? Ms. Tori Lafon, Mr. Mark Melton, wherever you are, thank you so much for your wonderful uh, work this year. Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you Good all night, so much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Everybody.